Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about third degree price discrimination. Uh, in doing so, I'm gonna do standard monopoly single price profit maximization, where the monopolist produces the output corresponding to where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. I'm gonna do this with equations and I'm gonna show actually kind of a couple insights here. So I'm gonna do this in the context of an exam question that I've given. So don't worry about the points obviously, or the part C, or the missing part A or B or the continue to assume, right? So we'll take a starting point. We have got a firm who's captured the market, operates with marginal cost equal to $12 per unit. Suppose the firm realizes there's essentially two different segments of the market. We have some demanders representable with demand of uh, their quantity demanded is equal to 36 minus the price. And some demanders representable with this demand function, quantity demanded is equal to 36 minus two times the price. If the firm's able to successfully practice third degree price discrimination, what price and quantity does it optimally set for each good, for each group? All right, so I mean, you could go ahead and pause the video and, and kind of work this problem on your own and then come back. <laughs> but what, what's, the, what's gonna be the approach? Well, I'm gonna take this market, I'm gonna find marginal revenue, I'm gonna take this market, I'm gonna find marginal revenue, set this marginal revenue equal to 12, set this marginal revenue equal to 12. Solve for the optimal quantities and then go to the demand curve to get prices. Remember, prices come from the demand curve. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I've got each, I've got each segment of the market. Here is the first one. If I've got quantity in terms of price, that's ordinary demand. I'm going to make this price in terms of quantity. That's technically inverse demand. But this is like the Y, this is like the X, and it's the second one that we usually see graphs of. It's also the second one that I would work from when you're solving for our monopoly profit maximization. All right, so let's find marginal revenue one and set it equal to the marginal cost of 12. So marginal revenue is going to have the same vertical intercept as our inverse demand, but twice the slope. So I'm gonna write down marginal revenue one is gonna be 36 minus two Q one is equal to 12. I'll have a calculus explanation for why that's true in a second, or you can just kind of look at the bottom of my page. Uh, so marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost of 12. So just algebra, let's move this, uh, let's move the minus 2q1 to one side, move the 12 to the other side, I'll get 24 is equal to 2q1 or 12q1. So the quantity that this firm is going to sell in segment one is going to be 12. What's going to be the associated price? Well, let's go to the demand curve. So I'll evaluate my demand, my inverse demand at a price of 12, and I'm going to get, uh, or sorry, at a quantity of 12, and I'm going to get a price of 24. What about in segment two? Segment two had demand Q2 is equal to 36 minus two P1. I'll solve for price. This is gonna give me my inverse demand. Okay, so it's gonna be P2 is equal to 18 minus one half Q2. My marginal revenue is gonna have the same vertical intercept times twice, or it with twice the slope. So this is gonna be one half Q2, so this is gonna be one Q2. Oh, so I've been talking about vertical intercept. This right here, this is just our familiar y equals mx plus b form, right? This is y, this is b, this is m, the slope, and this is our x. It's just our familiar y equals mx plus b form. So this is the intercept. So I have the same intercept and then twice the slope. Anyway, so going ahead and solving, we'll have a quantity of six that'll go to segment our second segment of the demand. We can find the associated price. Uh, by evaluating our demand at the quantity of six, so it's gonna be 18 minus one half six or 18 minus three, so it's gonna be a price of 15. All right, let's just keep this in mind. I'm gonna do a, a brief calculus interlude. So we're gonna set a we're gonna set a quantity of 12 in market one, a quantity of six in market two. We're gonna charge a price of 24 in market one, charge a price of 15 in market two. So I'm gonna do a brief calculus interlude, then I'm gonna compare this to what you what price we'd expect if we are unable to use third degree price discrimination, and then I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the connection to elasticity and discounts in a second. All right, so the calculus version, this is just to explain why is it that our marginal revenue has the same vertical intercept but twice the slope as our original inverse demand? Well, here would be our calculus version of the firm's profit maximization problem. It's gonna maximize profit, this is profit, revenue minus cost by choosing quantity. So my profit here, pi, economists like to use pi for profit because we use P for price. So ultimately it's less confusing, <laughs> trust me. All right, so we'll have 36 minus Q1, or 36 minus Q1, the quantity 36 minus Q1 times Q1 minus 12 Q1. Just distributing this quantity, we're gonna get a Q squared. 
you're always going to get a q squared if you have a linear demand because we're going to have q times q you're always going to have a q squared and we take the derivative this is going to be the derivative of a linear function is just the it's just the slope the derivative of this quadratic function you multiply the base by the exponent and reduce the exponent by one and because you do that you're always going to have two times whatever this is twice the slope same vertical intercept and then here's the cost portion and then solving again it's just q q1 is equal to 12. here is what we did for market two it's just the same thing so i'm going to have the firms maximizing by choosing the quantity it's going to sell in or it's going to set in segment two here's the profits in market segment two then substituting and then taking our first or, or taking derivative with respect to the quantity it's setting in segment of the market two and finally again there's our six is equal to q2 okay very good so what if price discrimination is impossible well now what it's going to do is it's going to treat its demand as like it's going to treat those two segments as like part of one demand curve and so i'm just going to sum up my demand for market one plus my demand for market two so this is going to be quantity of 72 minus 3p solving to get my inverse demand it's going to be 24 minus 1 third q okay just algebra now let's find this monopoly's profit maximizing quantity it's going to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost okay marginal revenue is going to have the same vertical intercept as my inverse demand twice the slope so it's going to be 24 minus 2 thirds q equals marginal cost of 12. okay and then just solving we'll find a quantity of 18. The associated price so let's go back to this demand curve to find the associated price the price is going to be uh, is going to be 18. okay so some interesting things going on here first off notice what happened with the quantity so i'm going to set a, if i cannot you if i cannot practice price discrimination okay treat my demanders as a single demand curve i'm going to sell a quantity of 18. but wait a second we were setting a quantity of 18 total when we were able to segment our markets into two groups of demanders, right? 12 plus 6, 18. That's always true if you have linear demand. So if you have linear demand, you're going to produce the same quantity as a single price monopolist, whether you're using third degree price discrimination or not. So that's a good kind of robustness check on your work. If you have one of these problems, you can look and see, verify that you're selling the same quantity in both in both cases, whether you're using third degree price discrimination or not. It's got to be the same quantity if you have linear demand. What about the price? Well, here we're setting a price of 18. Look what we were doing before. Previously, we charged a price of 24 in market one. We charged a price of two of uh, 15 in market two. So relative to what's happening, if we don't use third degree price discrimination, market one pays a price premium. Market two gets a discount. Group two gets a discount because their demand's more elastic, right? It's hard to see from this, but let's go up. Let's compare our inverse demands. So this inverse demand curve has a vertical intercept of one half and a, or of 18 and a slope of one half. This one has a vertical intercept of uh, 36 and a slope of one. The slope of one, well, minus one, is steeper than the slope of one half or minus one half. So the flatter demand curve, more elastic, it's market two that gets a discount with third degree price discrimination. It's gonna get 15 relative to the no price discrimination situation. And market one, which is more inelastic, is gonna pay, pay a price premium with third degree price discrimination relative to the situation where there's no third degree price discrimination. And that's, that's gonna be generally true. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video.